For hundreds of years, humans have been introducing plants and animals to different parts of the world. But recently, international trade and the speed of globalization has dramatically increased the risk of biological invasion. The diamondback moth, the red spider mite, parthenium, leaf miner, and white fly are just some examples of species that are threatening biodiversity, causing economic losses and impacting on livelihoods in Southeast Asia. The golden apple snail was originally introduced to Southeast Asia as a food source, but the snails escaped and became a serious threat to rice production and the native ecosystem. Within seven days of planting my rice, the golden apple snail will attack the young plants. It's damaging my crops and creating gaps in the rice field. Because of this, I'm getting lower yield and earning less money. The red spider mite destroys crops by sucking cell contents from the leaves, cell by cell. They can feed on hundreds of plants, including strawberries. The red spider mite has become a serious issue for us strawberry farmers. The growth of the plant is affected. Therefore, the fruits will be significantly smaller. And because of this pest, the market for fresh fruits has reduced. This is a huge problem for us. Parthenium was first introduced as a contaminant in imported wheat, a weed that aggressively colonizes. In some areas, outbreaks have been of almost epidemic proportions. The problem I have with Parthenium is that it is taking over my farm and it is very hard to control. It interferes with my crops by stealing their fertilizers and my plants are now showing symptoms of malnutrition. When I pulled the patinium weed out, I started getting an allergic reaction on my hands. Then it got worse over time, resulting later in skin blisters that eventually burst. The blister scars are already one year old, but you can still see the effects on my hands. Mycania originated in South America, but found its way to Southeast Asia in the late 20th century. Also called the Mala Minute weed, this fast-growing vine has now become a serious problem. My kidney is a fast-growing weed, so we have to control it regularly. And since this weed invaded my field, I have to weed every week. I have less time to spend with my family because I have to work harder. When a new pest gets into an environment, you don't have endemic natural enemies controlling them. And therefore, uh, farmers resort to all sorts of measures, including uh, using pesticides. Cost of pesticides go up. At the same time, you also got a safety issue for the farmers who are applying them. To save from pesticides costs. Sometimes we try to control this weed by hand or by using a brush cutter. But because it is growing so rapidly, we still need to hire someone to help us. And this is also costing us. I struggle to control this weed as it is spreading very rapidly. When I remove the weed, there are seeds going into the soil. And if it is raining, in one week, the patinium will come back. Even when I'm using chemicals, the weed comes back. There's no permanent control for it. It is very, very discouraging. In Southeast Asia, CABI and its partners are working to develop solutions for tackling the problem of invasive alien species. This includes the development of biocontrol agents. Biological control is the use of natural enemies. It's trying to use the good insects against the not so good ones. It's cost effective. It's also ecologically very friendly. It's very self-sustaining once you get the system going. And it's safe to people. That's the most important thing.
many Southeast Asian countries, agriculture is an important mainstay. So farmers depend on their crops for their livelihoods. So when an invasive species comes in, it definitely affects the livelihoods of farmers who are growing crops, and therefore uh, farmers will suffer. Many of these issues are actually preventable. There are many people who can help to prevent this problem. So let us use them, lose their resources, use their expertise, and get it out of our system.